Our second panelist is Kekashin Basu. She is the winner of the 2016 International Children's Peace Prize, and she's been impacting the global fraternity with her work on promoting gender equality, mitigating climate change, and advocating for social change for much of her young life. She began her change-making journey at the young age of eight. She established Green Hope with five friends when she was 12 after returning from speaking at Rio Plus 20. In the short span of five years since it was established, Green Hope has grown to over 1,000 young activists working around the world. In 2013, at the age of 12, she was elected for a two-year term as Global Coordinator for Children and Youth of the United Nations Environment Program and a member of its major group's facilitating committee. She's the youngest person and the first minor ever to be elected into this position in the history of the UNEP. I present Ms. Basu. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bill. 14th August 2017, a deforestation-induced landslide in Freetown, Sierra Leone, buries alive 500 people. 200 of those dead were children. 1st April 2017, a forest fire starts in British Columbia and rages on for months, destroying over a million acres of forest making it the worst forest fire in British Columbia history. And at least 39,000 people lost their homes, businesses, and livelihoods. Summer of 2017, 41 million people displaced from their homes due to floods and landslides in Assam and West Bengal in India. These dates and places are not just mere statistics, there are the number of innocent human lives that were sacrificed on the altar of economic prosperity and human apathy. Time has turned these thousands of deaths into mere numbers, and I'm sure many of you might not have even heard of these incidents, and if you did, would have forgotten about them by now. This apathy is the root cause of the repetitiveness of such horrific climate change induced disasters which decimate humanity, pollute the environment, and throw up a prospect of a bleak future for my generation. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kehksha. I am 17 years old, and it is a huge honor for me to be here today and share with you my journey of change. As Bill mentioned, I am the winner of the 2016 International Children's Peace Prize and the founder president of my own youth organization, Green Hope Foundation. And I'm also a United Nations human rights champion. All this began about 10 years ago when I saw this picture of a dead bird with its stomach full of plastic. My eight-year-old mind went numb at the thought of the agony this bird must have endured before it died. So I decided to do something to change that, and I started by going to my neighborhood shops, restaurants, beauty saloons, speaking to the shop owners, to the children, about why it was so important to protect the environment. I started involving the youth in my community, and we started collecting waste and recycling materials. And this local change making caught the attention of the United Nations, and I was invited to be a part of the 2011 United Nations Tunza International Children and Youth Conference in Bandung, Indonesia, where at 11 years old, I spoke at the children's plenary about how they could make a difference in the environmental agenda. That was my first step into the international arena. And since then, I've worked tirelessly to get our voices heard. And this led me to attending uh, the 2012 United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development, or the Rio Plus 20 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And this was a conference where, as you all know, governments, world leaders were and NGOs, companies were all there discussing our international economic and environmental policies. And at 12 years old, I was the youngest delegate to address a press conference 
on the topic of stopping land degradation. And this conference had over 50,000 delegates from presidents, prime ministers, dignitaries, and people from all walks of life. But there were only a handful of children. It was our future that was being decided, but by adults who might not even live to see that future. So I decided to change this, and on my return to Dubai, I founded Green Hope Foundation with the sole objective of providing children and young people with the platform to not only learn about environmental challenges, but also how to take actions to mitigate them and how to fight for their undeniable right to a sustainable future. Our journey of change making began with a like-minded youth with a burning desire to change the challenges and inequalities that we the youth faced by empowering them. Our message was simple and direct. Our planet is dying and it's dying fast. Climate change is affecting every country on every continent. It is disrupting national economies and affecting lives, costing people, communities, and countries dearly today and even more tomorrow. We are running the most dangerous experiment in history right now, which is to see how much carbon dioxide our atmosphere can handle before there's an environmental meltdown. So why do we keep ignoring climate change as a threat? It is the harshest reality of our times, and yet we continue to underestimate or even trivialize its importance. Polar ice caps are melting, sea levels are rising, typhoons and hurricanes are wrecking havoc, forest fires are choking our skies, and our fossil fuel-driven economies are turning our cities into veritable gas chambers. And this escalating rate of environmental degradation has given rise to a new phenomenon, climate refugees. Millions of people are forced to migrate from their homes and countries due to floods, droughts, sea level rise as a consequence of climate change. And unfortunately, a large portion of these migrants are children. So climate change impacts our right to life, to health, water, food, shelter, access to education, and in the case of migration from disaster zones, we're uprooted from a stable setup to one that's fraught with uncertainty and exploitation. The plight of girls is even worse as we have to fight against another, another dimension, that of gender discrimination. Even today, many societies still view girls as dispensable and in the face of disasters brought about by climate change, we girls often find ourselves at the end of the value chain, being exploited and trafficked as if our dignity was expendable. This must change, and this is why young people like me are speaking out all across the world, demanding our right to live with dignity, because we are the citizens of today and tomorrow, but we will not live to see our tomorrow if our today is not taken care of. Environmental apathy must be done away with. We, the children and youth, have a leadership role to play and mold the future the way we want it. We reach out to all sections of civil society, especially the young people. And through our field projects, we provide them with ground level hands-on exposure to various environmental and social issues. There are over 2 billion children in the world, and it is imperative that they are involved, deeply involved in the sustainable development process. They must have their voices heard, and at Green Hope, we engage, educate, and empower these children so that they can take actions to protect their immediate environment. And over the past five and a half years, we've spoken to several children, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, all around the world. And it is so amazing to see how much they know about why we should stop polluting the environment, about biodiversity conservation, and why it's important to protect our planet. And last year, a girl, a six-year-old girl at a junior school in Toronto even said that 
if you do something nice for the environment, the environment will do something nice for you. And that is such a simple ideology that each and every one of us can follow. We need to change the mindsets of the adults about the capability and potential of children. That is the first step towards change. To reach out to youth, we conduct environmental academies, which are tailor-made workshops and conferences where we spread awareness about sustainable development. We focus on mitigation of climate change, feature justice, uh, sustainable consumption and production, stopping land degradation, biodiversity conservation, social upliftment, moving to renewable energy, and gender equality. And we have conducted over 120 academies all around the world and directly reached out to more than 5,000 students who are now ambassadors of environmental change in their own communities and schools. We focus on education for sustainable development. That is our main focus because it provides every human being with the necessary knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values required to shape a sustainable future. All our academies are conducted by youth for youth because we believe that peer-to-peer -peer communication is always more effective. And we use several creative ways to spread awareness about sustainability. We use art, such as art workshops and art competitions. We use dance, such as flash mobs. We use music. We have a band where we uh, compose songs, sing, play instruments, rap, beatbox. We use writing. When I was 11, I wrote a book called The Tree of Hope, which was officially launched at the United Nations when I was 15 years old, and it's available on Amazon, which is, which is a story of a young girl's journey in the desert to turn her village into a sustainable oasis. We also use drama, so Green Hope has acted out The Tree of Hope several times as well. Sports play a very important role in the sustainable development agenda, and we firmly believe in the concept of leaving no one behind. So our soccer matches and cricket matches involve all the people who help Green Hope, such as the tailors, gardeners, cleaners. We also very recently took part in the Sustainable Development Goals Soccer World Cup, where every team chooses a sustainable development goal and plays for it where they spread awareness and that's how they win. So Green Hope chose goal 13, which is climate action. All our academies are backed up by ground level work. Moving to a sustainable lifestyle, sustainable consumption is one of the keys to achieving a sustainable future. And we conduct recycling campaigns all throughout the year and children as young as six and seven collect cans, newspapers, toners, uh, recyclable items. And every recycling campaign generates over two tons of recyclable materials, which would have otherwise polluted and degraded our planet. We have planted over 13,000 trees all across the world as we regularly practice carbon offsetting. One of our main projects is turtle conservation. So last year in March, we went to the eastern coast of Oman, where we were able to see how the green turtles lived their lifestyle. We actually saw how they came out of the water to lay their eggs, how the, they hatched, and we had the amazing opportunity of actually tagging the turtles with the scientists so that we could track their movements in the seas. When I was 12, I also adopted a hawksbill turtle named Nadia, and I can still track her movements in the sea now. We've also adopted a northern white rhino named Fatu. In summer of 2017, Green Hope went to the Sundarbans, which is the largest mangrove forest in the world. And as you already know, mangroves play such an important part of our ecosystem especially in providing a habitat and acting as a natural barrier against natural disasters. 
So in the Sundarbans, where 28 Green Hope members went, we planted 300 mangrove saplings on an island that was destroyed by Cyclone Isla. And the areas that did have the mangroves were much more protected than the ones that didn't have these mangroves. So the next time, if a cyclone hit the Sundarbans, this island would be much better protected. We also conducted workshops for the village students all the way from kindergarten right through to the senior year. And we did this workshop in both English and their local language, which was Bengali. We were also able to reach out to 122 tribal families where we gave them clothes, umbrellas, and torches. So Green Hope has spread its wings and gone international. What started out as an initiative of a 12-year-old girl is now in 10 countries with over 1,000 members and volunteers all across the world. We have conducted workshops and conferences all across India in villages uh, the, with, for the children of the slums, orphans, and in the urban areas with schools and universities. In July 2013, Green Hope was invited to Seychelles to be a part of their eco-schools program. In 2014, we were in Sri Lanka where we conducted a workshop at the World Conference on Youth. In 2015, we were the keynote speakers at the New York Eco School Summit, and most recently in 2018, February, where we spoke at the United Nations International School. Most recently, we are in Canada, where we have ravine cleanups, shoreline cleanups, tree planting sessions on 22nd April, which was day before yesterday, just before I traveled here to St. Louis, we did a community tree planting of 500 trees with the mayor of Toronto. We have also spoken at junior schools, middle schools, high schools, and at the University of Toronto and Carleton University. It was a huge honor for Green Hope to conduct our first ever side event at the United Nations during the intergovernmental negotiations in 2015 on the topic of renewable energy and future generations which had speakers, very eminent speakers, from UNICEF, UN Women, and UNEP. Our first ever international project was when we went to the salt pans of India in 2015. And the conditions we saw there were absolutely terrible because according to the Indian government, the people who lived there did not exist, so they had no identities. The conditions there with the desert environment and the uh, salty environment were terrible. They had a lifespan of 30 years, and when they were cremated, their legs did not burn because of the salt ingrained in their legs from working in the salt mines. So we distributed 100 solar lamps to the people living over there, and that was the first time that they actually had a source of light when they had dinner that night. We also spoke at their village schools about how their children could make a difference in this field. In July 2016, Green Hope went to Nepal, where we took 120 kgs of stationary items for the children of the prisoners and the children at the orphanage. We also distributed LED bulbs to the old age homes. We planted 100 trees. And we visited this really special home for the HIV-infected children, where they communicated with us through music and dance and art, even though there was a language barrier. Now, the plight of the Syrian refugees has been dominating the news headlines for the past several months now. And every media platform broadcasts the haunting images of the plight of these Syrian refugees especially of the women and children who inevitably suffer the most. And the solution is no longer to feel sorry for them, but for every member of society to actually take action to alleviate their suffering, because they too deserve a life of dignity like each and every one of us. So this new year, uh, in 2018, five Green Hope members traveled to the border of Lebanon and Syria where we went to a refugee camp and conducted environmental workshops for over 600 children 
and we conducted six environmental workshops. This was the first time that many of these children even had an exposure for, to anything to do with protecting our environment. But after our workshops, they decided to plant trees in their camp to organize a cleanup and to also spread awareness amongst their friends for the ones who didn't come to our workshop about why it was so important to protect our planet. This desolate, dry, hot, barren, infertile land without a twig of grass in sight. This is the run of Kutch, which is the salt pans of India. And this Martian landscape already exists on Earth. And this is what Earth 2030 will look like if we don't take action now. These little girls have to walk barefoot on that hot, rocky soil, and they don't go to school. So I ask you, what kind of future are these girls looking forward to? The answer to that lies within each and every one of us. Once you leave this comfortable, air-conditioned auditorium, I urge you to take at least one pledge to plant a tree, consume with care, sponsor one child's education. The opportunities are so many, and it all depends on you. The dream of a sustainable future can be realized only if we bridge the gap between the haves and the have-nots. It will be realized when we stop discriminating based on age, gender, race, color, religion. It will be realized when all genders have equal rights and equal opportunities. It will be realized when everyone has access to education. And it will be realized when each and every one of us takes one step outside of our comfort zones to make a difference. I believe that it can be done and I'm not going to wait while others are still trying to make up their minds because it's about collaborative action amongst civil society, policy makers, governments, private sector and all its stakeholders. Every day of procrastination and inaction is leading our planet towards total annihilation because time is not on our side and we need to act now. As Lyndon Johnson said, yesterday is not ours to recover, but tomorrow is ours to win or lose. So we must act now because protecting our environment is no longer a choice. It is a responsibility. Thank you.